So I've got the fitting tacked on and that's going nowhere. So what I'm going to do is start welding the outside of this first and then on the inside I've installed a box which is taped to the side of the tank because for those of you who don't know if you're welding stainless steel and you don't protect or shield the back of the workpiece then it reacts with the oxygen in the air and creates what's commonly known as coking and it will totally ruin the weld it won't be sanitary so we're going to take a hose from this argon tank and we're going to run it into that little box that I've put on the back there and we're going to fill this whole cavity with argon and back purge it essentially and then what will happen is the argon will protect the back of the weld from the oxygen as we go around the periphery and weld it up and then I'll go on the inside we'll move the box to the outside and do the same again on the inside and the reason I'm doing the inside last is because it's the inside that we want to be the most sanitary of the two welds because it's going to be exposed to our beer and it's going to be exposed to cleaning chemicals so the internal welds are always done last so that they always are the most pristine of the two welds so there we are that is uh, Will Ferrell <laughs> Feral number one, folks. Let's see if I can. It's still hot. Let's pull this piece of foil off. I'm taking the Mickey now. It's going to burn me. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah, it's burning me big time. It's definitely too hot to be. There we go. So, as you can see, the inside looks relatively clean. And we managed to go all the way around this weld without any issues it just pulled a little bit there but I learned lessons from when I welded up Tom's pots a few months ago to make sure that we cut these ferrules down to a good shape you see and there's less chance of it pulling the pot so we've just got a tiny little pull there but I think this time round we're gonna get away with it so there you go Tom Oh, you can see it's pulled slightly on the other side as well, but it's barely noticeable. So that's how you do it, buddy. That's how you do it. So just for the final bit, we've got all the um, ferrules welded on now. Uh, and on the inside, there's just a little lip of steel which uh, protrudes, if you can see it, just there. So all that's left to do now is just flow that bit of steel into the ferrule itself and that extra steel there will provide the filler metal to uh, to fill in any gaps that happen to be there so I don't have to try and get in there with a rod so I've already done it mm, halfway around just about so it's just this bottom section to flow now and then once that's done we are ready to clean the welds up And you'll notice I haven't purged the outside of the tank here. That's what, one of the reasons is because I'm moving really quite quickly and the most of the heat is being concentrated on that little fillet of steel that's melting away. So by the time that the steel on the outside of the ferrule has heated enough to oxidize, I've already moved away from that section, meaning the outside of the steel never actually becomes molten and therefore never actually picks up any oxi oxides or oxygen. So I just have to modify the angle a little bit so I can get into here. Bit of freehand welding. Not really advisable. If you're not used to the TIG, doing something like this can land you in all sorts of bother because you 
generally want to wobble around quite a lot and uh, that's what causes problems with TIG welding. You need to be comfortable and stable. And just the last 10 centimetres, 10 millimetres even. 10 centimetres would be a long way. And there we have it. So if I can put some light on the situation, we'll be able to take you off the tripod. So I've got a little bit of light on the situation here, so we'll see if we can zoom in just show you what I've done in there so you can see we've we've flowed that steel so now it's smooth on the inside granted it doesn't look as neat as the external weld but it is inside the pot after all but wait until you see it once it's had its pickling paste and it's cleaned up in there it will be as good as any other sanitary weld that I've done but yes that is nice and tidy I'm happy with that. The key is that there is no little cracks. Everything's smoothed over and that means that we don't have any bug traps for little nasties to grow in. So now I'm going to bring out the Antox or aka the pickling paste which you guys have seen before during the brew stand build. So I'm just going to paste this on around the weld and this will just get rid of that staining, that discoloration and bring it back to a nice shiny stainless steel finish. Because we're all magpies and we all love shiny shiny. that bit and then we'll do the same in here right so we'll come back to this and we'll have another peak once the acid has done its job so whilst we wait for the pickling paste to do its work we're gonna now just put these half sockets onto the Tri clamp ferrules, get these welded up nicely, ready to receive the elements which we'll be putting in sometime next week I would imagine. But all we need to do is just weld this all the way around. Very simple, no back purging required on this instance. Right then folks, I've got you really zoomed in now and uh, I've locked the focus because I want to show you some close-up TIG welding. I've put the helmet, the cheap screw fix helmet, on top of the on top of the uh, camera to prevent um, well, so you can see more than anything, not really to prevent damage because you can't really damage the optics. They're designed to take light. Anyway, I digress. So what I'm going to do is just show you a little bit of this welding and I'll kind of talk you through it as I'm going along, provided you can hear me. So I'm just lighting up here, any random spot. And then what I'm doing is I'm concentrating the lion's share of the heat on the thick two and a quarter inch BSP socket because that has quite a thick wall on it compared to the tri-clamp ferrule and the idea there is that the the steel will melt obviously and uh, start to flow and fill in the gap between between the ferrule and the socket whereas if I concentrate all the heat on the on the ferrule there's a distinct chance that we could burn through the ferrule bef 
before the steel on the socket has actually melted. So it is a little bit difficult to do this with the camera being there. So I'm kind of getting my torch angles a little bit out. I'm generally just off 90 degrees to the workpiece, if anything, tilted 10 or 15 degrees in the direction of travel. But I'm pretty sure you can see the technique that I've got going here. I'm just doing little circles and then once that puddle travels forwards, you can see it starts to wick into the gap between the two components and it flows in. You know, TIG welding really is just the control of a puddle of molten metal. So what we do is we influence where that puddle is going to travel. And if you don't have a big enough puddle, then uh, there isn't going to be sufficient surface tension to pull, pull the puddle forwards or to bridge gaps in, in your components. Like there is a little gap between these two. It is tight, tightly fitted on the inside, but there's a, there's a little bit of a bevel. I think you can just about make it out. There's a little bit of a bevel on the uh, end of both the ferrule and the socket, meaning that where they meet externally, it does look as though they're not fitted up correctly. But trust me, they are. In fact, the fact that there's got it's got this little bevel on helps me get the weld down into the root of the joint. And here you can see we're just about to close up to where we started the weld, and we've had no problems whatsoever going around this fitting and then as soon as I come on top of the other weld what I'll do is just run it a little bit over the top and then gradually back off with the foot pedal and then obviously we keep the gas there with the post flow to prevent any discoloration and then excuse the noise there we go and we take off the camera and the white balance is a little bit out, but you can see that we've got a lovely rainbow effect on the fitting. It is still red hot, I shouldn't really be picking that up. And uh, there it is, finished and ready, ready itself to go through the pickling paste process along with the rest of the tanks. Easy as that.